Hi and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can add share buttons for social media using the social share buttons widget from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin. With this widget, you can make it incredibly easy for visitors to your site to share its content on various social networks. The Social Share Buttons widget makes it easy to add share buttons wherever you like and to style them in a variety of easy ways, so you can be sure that they will fit with your site design. This widget includes a multitude of handy options and, in this video, we'll be examining how they work and how to make the most of each one. And, as you can see from these examples, the Social Share Buttons widget can smoothly be combined with any other page element, especially the other widgets in the key add-ons collection. So, you have a lot of creative room to make whatever site design you have in mind. Moreover, you can use reveal effects, like here. If a visitor hovers over the Share label, the different social media buttons you created will appear as well. And, we have another example of that effect here. This time, the share buttons appear vertically under the share label. But how you set them up is down to personal preference. However, we are here to arm you with the knowledge needed to reproduce any of these examples. So, let's start. Head over to the back end. And, as you can see on the right, I already prepared the section where I'll be putting my social share buttons element. So, now all I need to do is search for the widget in the element or sidebar. Social share buttons. There it is. Drag it over to the right. And this is what the widget looks like by default. We have this label saying share and several icons with neat black and white styling. When you start to customize the social share buttons, the first option you have is for choosing the layout. The default setting is list, but you can replace it with drop down. This is the layout that has the buttons appearing on hover. See? This is the setting I'll be keeping. Then we have the type option where we can pick if the buttons will be in the form of icons or text. The icons are the default setting and we saw what they look like. And with the icons you have all these fields for changing them, but please keep in mind which network you're changing which icon for. Also, if you want to remove the button icon for any of these networks, make sure to disable the share function for that network as well. Ok, I won't be using icons. Instead, I'll replace them with the textual button type. However, once I've created my plan design, I'll go back and show you the relevant style options for the icon button type. Alright, the textual share buttons look like this. And to customize them, we have the following options. Network name, where you can keep the full name of the networks or you can use a shortened version. And that looks like this. I'll be keeping this setting. Now, these switches allow us to choose which network share buttons we want to display. They are all enabled by default. And in the case of Twitter, you also have this field, Twitter via text. You should add your or your company's Twitter handle there, so you can be quoted with the content that's being shared. Now, if you want to remove any of the buttons from the page, you just need to switch over to No, or disable the sharing for that network. I'll disable the last two. And now if we look, ok, I have fewer buttons, namely the four that correspond to the networks that have sharing enabled. After setting all that, you have this option, drop down hover behavior. The default setting is animate to bottom. That is what got us the animation that makes the buttons come into view one by one when the share label is hovered over. The other possible settings here are animate on right. So, when we hover, the buttons appear to the right of the label, and they appear gradually as well. And there's the animate on left setting, which looks like this. Given that I set an image to the left, this setting isn't working its best with my design. So, I'll switch over to the animate on right setting. Ok, then we have the label type option. The default setting is text, so our label is the word share here. If we want to change that, other than text, we also have the text with icon setting. Then we have this icon next to the word share. Don't worry, both are customizable. And there's also the icon label type. Then we only have an icon acting as our social share button label. For my plan design, I'll use the text with icon setting. So once you're set on your label type, you can customize its content. 
We have the social share text label field for replacing the text portion of the label. So if you want to replace share with some other word or phrase, then you can do so by typing in new text here. Additionally, you can customize the icon portion of the label. You can use something different from the icon library. The default icon is from here too. Alternatively, you can upload a custom SVG. That's what I'll do. And the icon I want is already selected as it was the last thing I added to my media library. So I just need to click on insert media. And there we go. It's a similar type of icon, but I wanted to keep the symbolism of sharing recognizable. Okay, the spacing between the text and the icon portions of the label is something we'll fix when we're styling the element, so no worries on that. For now, the last two things we have left in this tab are the developer tools and help. When we open the first one, there is just one option in here. If you switch it to yes, it will display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. That's this text, which you can copy for use elsewhere on your site. Okay, I'll put this back. And under that, we have the help section where you can find some helpful resources, which include a link to our help center in case you need it. Alright, that's it. Moving on to the second tab, style. The first thing we have under style is this option to set the button margin. The buttons are, remember, all of these that appear on hover. The normally visible text is just a label and we have separate options for that. So if I increase the values here and then we go to check, you can see how the space between the individual buttons has increased. I'll clear this and click here so I can set different values for different fields. And those values will be 9 pixels on the right and 6 at the bottom. And there we go. This is what the new margin looks like. Okay. The section after this one. When I open it, it's empty. This is because its settings are designed for the icon type buttons, not the textual ones I picked. So when I'm done styling the element, I'll circle back to this and show you what options you'd have here. For now, let's take a look at the network text style section. In here, we can change the button text color. I'll set this one, for example, and then we can check. The buttons show the change. Okay, I'll set an almost black shape for this. Okay, there it is. Then we have the network text hover color. So this is the button text color that will be seen when you hover over one of the buttons. I'll set this, for example, and then we can see how the button color changes when we hover over the different buttons. For this, I'll set the same color I have for the regular button text, but I'll add a degree of transparency to it. Okay, there we go. And now when we look, the buttons seem to get lighter when we hover because of the transparency. After that, we have the network text typography. This is where we can make all kinds of typography adjustments to the button text, such as changing the font family. You can look through this list or search for the font if you know its name. Then we can change the font size. I'll set 17 pixels for this. There we go. This is what the buttons look like now. They are smaller than before. Then we can adjust the font weight. I'll put 500 here. Okay. After that, we have the transform option, which lets us make the text uppercase, lowercase, capitalized or keep it normal. I'll make mine capitalized. Now if we look, this is what the button text looks like. All right. Other than that, we have the style option if we want to make our text, say, italic. Besides that, the decoration option lets us add a line over, under or through our button text. And under that, we have the line height, letter spacing and word spacing options if we want to add more space around the text or to space out our letters or words. And that's it for the typography options. After them, we have the network text hover underline, which lets us add a line under the button text that will appear when we hover, like so. We can see the line under the text. And if you keep this enabled, you will have options for styling the line. These options include the underline color. You can set anything you like and then it will appear as the new underline color when you hover. Okay. Other than that, we have the underline width. By increasing the value here, this will do. Let's see it now. Here. The line isn't wide enough to cover the whole button text, only a small part at the beginning. 
OK, let me clear this. Our next option is the underline offset. This lets us change the position of the underline in regard to the button text, so we can shift it closer to or further away from the button. If I increase this and then hover to check, we can see that the line practically overlaps with the text. And next to this, we also have the underline thickness option. By increasing it, I can increase the weight of the line. And making it thicker also made it easier to see its offset now. So, those were the underline style options. As I don't plan on using it, I'll simply switch this to no. There we go. And now we can proceed to the next section, which is the general label style. And in here, we have the label padding option. This will let us create more space between the label and the button text. When I increase the padding, if we look, we can see that the space all around the label has grown. And as you can see, that includes both the label text and icon. Let me clear this as I want to set different values. And I'll click here to delink the fields. Then I can put 4 pixels on the right, and this will separate the label from the buttons a bit. Now I have this gap here between the icon part of the label and the buttons that follow it. Alright, moving on. Our next section is for styling the text portion of the label. It includes options like the text label tag. You can pick any of the heading tags or set a paragraph tag if you prefer. Then we have the text label color option. And you can easily set any color you like here. Alongside that, we have the text label typography. It contains the same typography settings we've seen earlier, so I'll just set what I need and we can carry on. And that is 17 pixels for the size. OK. After that, we have the text label padding option. This lets us add more space specifically around the text part of the label. You can see how there's more room around it now. I want to set different values for this as well. So I'll clear the values and click here to delink the fields. Then I'll set 14 pixels for the right side, 6 pixels at the bottom, and 10 pixels on the left. Perfect. Next, we have the icon label style options. These apply to the icon portion of the label, this here. The icon label position is set to be after the title, but you can switch it to stand before it. That would look like this. And it's the setting I'll be keeping. Then we can pick if your label icon will be boxed or not. Essentially, whether it will get a background shape. By enabling it, we get this circular background for the icon. We also get some options for styling this, but we'll get to that in a minute. For now, we have the icon label size, which lets us change the size of the icon. You can use the slider or type in a value. Then we have the icon label color, which lets us change the color of the icon. I'll set the hex code for the same shade I've been using on the buttons. There we go. And now we get to the icon background style options. With them, we can change the color, like so. Or we can set a border color, like so. Then we can adjust the icon label box size. By increasing the value here, we increase the size of the box holding our icon. OK. Next, we can use the icon label box size option to change the border thickness. You can see the line is much heavier now. I'll clear this. But that only restores the default border width value, which is 1 pixel. If you don't want to have a border at all, you can set 0 here instead. Alright, after that we have the icon label border radius option. Although the fields here look blank, there is a default radius already set. That's what got us a circle instead of a square for the icon box. So when I start to increase the values here, they'll reset first and start from 1. See, the values start low and the box is square shaped and has sharp edges. However, if you prefer having rounded corners or want a circular box, you should keep increasing the radius values. OK, I'll clear this. Finally, we have the icon label stroke width. I can't show you this option as it won't work with my chosen icon. Basically, for this, you need an SVG icon that has an outline. Then you'd use the stroke width option to change the thickness of that outline. Alright, that was it for the icon box background. I don't plan on using it, so I'll simply switch this back to no. There we go. My design is done. I can now hit update to save my work. And there, this is how my share buttons look. 
But before we finish up, I promise to show you the options you'd need if you opt for the icon type share buttons instead of the textual ones. Okay, there we go. And I'll also go back up and switch the layout to list. That way we can explore a completely different look. So the icons are here and the list layout ensures they're visible at all times. As far as the icons are concerned, you can replace them using the appropriate fields. The default icons come from the icon library, and you can pick something else from it to replace them. Keep in mind that sharing functionality is encoded to a specific network, so take care not to mix up the icons and the networks. And that goes for all of these. Then, under the Style tab, if we open the Network Icon Style section, we'll find options that will allow us to adjust the look of the icons. For starters, we can enable the icons boxed option. It's the same thing we saw with the textual buttons, but when you're using the icons, the default box is a square instead of a circle. After that, we have the icon size option. It's very straightforward. We can use it to change the icon size. And, as you can see, the box background adjusts to match the new icon size. Then, there are the normal and hover options for the icons. Under normal, there's the icon color. It comes with this familiar color picker, which makes setting a new color dead simple. Alongside that, we have the icon background color, for changing the color of the box background. So, it can look something like this. And, we can also set a border color if you plan on using a border. Okay. The color seems faint because the border is thin. After that, we have the icon box size option. As the name indicates, it lets us change the size of the box background. So you can adjust it however you like. And then we have the icon border size if you want to make the border thicker. Also, we have the border radius option here. Mind you, it will work even if you don't set the border. It's enough to have the box background and the radius will work on it. Either way, when you start to increase the values here, the corners of the box will get more and more rounded. Okay, let me reset all these options now. Just a sec. Alright, and we can switch over to the hover settings and see what we have in there. The first option is for setting the hover color. So you can pick any color you like and it will become visible when someone hovers over an icon. Then we have the icon background hover color. With that one, the color you set will show in the box serving as the icon background. I'll clear this. Next, the icon border hover color lets us set a color for a border that will be visible only on hover, which looks something like this. And those are the settings you get under hover. Since I don't plan on keeping the icon's box setting, I'll switch this to no. Now we can see that without the box setting, we have far fewer style options in this section. They let you change the icon size and its color. Alright, that's more or less all you need to know about the share buttons when you set the icon type and display them as a list. I'll go back to the content tab now and return the layout and type options to the previous setting so I can get back the design I want and update. This is it. This is the design I wanted. I have an icon and text label with textual share buttons that appear in the form of a horizontal dropdown. And this design that I just made is a copy of one of the examples from the widgets page. For additional ideas and inspiration on what you can do with the social share buttons widget, you can consider the other examples here. They showcase the different ways you can style your buttons, and they reveal how the addition of a background and the color change can have a big effect on the impression you form, and how picking different layout and type settings can make a massive difference. Ultimately, we hope you found this tutorial helpful, and that you will shortly be adding the social share buttons widget from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin to your website. If you have any questions that we haven't covered in the video or would like to leave a comment or suggestion, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching.